Get here, baby. Come on. Get in your chair. Get here. Oh, you're going the wrong way. I'm gonna put this all over. I want to welcome everyone. Thanks so much for coming out today. Can you hear me okay? Are we loud enough? Yes? Okay. So, uh, wow, it's fun to be here with uh, 
with my favorite congressman, David McKinley, and my favorite governor, Jim Justice. Thank you so much for coming today. It's awesome. <laughs> and baby dog. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So, um, so let's see. Uh, Jessica from um, from Senator Capito's office. You, would you stay up, stand up for a second? Thanks so much for coming. And and Rosemary and Mary Jo from uh, Senator Manchin's office. You're here. There you are, sitting right in the front. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so what we do here at Touchstone Research Laboratory is we invent things and then we spin out businesses. So I thought I'd just take a minute and spin you up on the kinds of things we've had going on. So um, we spun out Touchstone Testing Laboratory. That's the business that you see over to the, on, in that building. And we have a second facility um, in Millwood, West Virginia. So best way to explain that business is if you see any new airplane being built, that business has tested some of the metal that's on that airplane, any airplane made in the US and probably in Europe. If you see a rocket take off into space, the probabilities are they tested some of the materials on that rocket all the time. That's every day, that's what they do. Um, we have the seafoam business. You all know seafoam. It's a foam we make from coal. That's doing great. Their corporate headquarters is in the building, in this building over here. Uh, that's being the world today when we did that deal with their 20s with that business and uh and so that does really well we have another business uh, touchstone advanced composites that makes the molds for carbon fiber airplane parts so let's see a couple interesting things we're working on x59 this is a this is a supersonic airplane it'll be the first airplane ever built that'll break the speed of sound and not leave a sonic boom and we made probably all the molds for half that aircraft. Um, we did a... Oh. I, I need to do this more often. In, internally, this never happens. Uh, you know? So, um, let's see, we did, we did, uh, we did the, the booms for a solar sail. So the structural parts of a solar sail. So think a kite that's gonna be moved through space at 240,000 miles an hour, powered only by light from the sun. That's sort of interesting. So we did that here. And um, we have, so, so that business, got about 35 people, that business is doing great. So these are all businesses we built based on inventions here. And that's what brings us here today. Let's talk about Veloxin. And this is the Veloxin production machinery. This is a sort of a one-of-a-kind mill that makes a nanocrystalline alloy. So for 50 years, it's been the dream of material scientists to come up with a nanocrystalline grain structure. Okay, so I know I'm getting a lot in the weeds, right? Okay, so this, the reason you heat up a piece of steel and quench it real fast, you're trying to make really small grains. The smaller the grains in metal, the stronger it is. Nano would be the absolute perfect thing, and nobody knows how to do that. So for 15 years at MIT, they worked on the development of this. A, a gentleman named Chris Shu, he's brilliant. He headed the School of Material Science at MIT. He's the primary inventor of this. Um, they spun a business out in Boston, decided they wanted to do something different. You know, Boston is probably not the best place to manufacture metals. So uh, they called me up, and I said, yeah, let's move it down here, and we'll continue the development. So I want, to thank, I want to thank the governor because your economic development office has been fantastic in helping us move the business here. Um, Ed Gaunch, uh, Mike Graney, Mitch Carmichael, the whole team, they've been nothing but great. And so we've been able to move the business here and get it going. Now I'm going to tell you something else that happened since we got here. We brought in a $5 million Department of Energy program, and that's the thing that launches this business, in my opinion, in, at this location. So this is brand new, this is in just the last few weeks, and for, and for this, I'd like to thank the Congressman. So the lifeblood of Touchstone, so why can we invent all this stuff and spin businesses out? What, what makes that happen? It's the fact that we have government-funded research here that does that. And 
and the congressman's office has been fantastic at, at hel helping us, mentoring us, helping us find ways to find money to make this stuff happen. So that's unusual, and we really, really appreciate you very much. So, so now I'm talking about the congressman for a minute. Um, he, okay, so he's not just always been in Washington, right? He, we all know him, right? He's, he grew up around here. He's a civil engineer and built, by the way, the largest engineering and architectural firm in the region, the largest the region's ever seen uh, before he went to Congress. In fact, he designed all four buildings that you see here, right, back in the day. So, uh, so I still want to talk to you about the air conditioning in my office. I don't think it's sufficient uh, in the summertime, but uh, anyway, maybe that's for later. But um, so, so people have given him grief over this infrastructure bill. And I laugh because if, I, if he weren't in Congress and I wanted to know something about the infrastructure bill, that's who I'd call. He is a civil engineer. That's the thing they know. There's maybe many things he doesn't know. Infrastructure, yes, that's the thing he's going to know probably better than anybody in the House of Representatives. So thank you so much. And by the way, we really want that uh, interstate exchange. That would be really, really nice. So, um, so that's all I wanted to say today. I, I want to introduce my friend and your friend. In fact, I don't think he requires any introduction. I think everybody here knows David by first name, right? Because he grew up around here. He's been nothing but supportive of all of us. Thank you for designing our buildings. And uh, I'm going to turn this over to you. Thank you. Is, can you hear me in the back? All right, back there. Uh, I do appreciate what he, he, his introduction on that and, and always getting with Jim Justice. Uh, but, and, you know, you look back over now, the relationship we had, that when Brian called over the years, we've known each other, oh, good night, back 1983 is I think the first time we had a working relationship with each other. 1983, so for 40, nearly 40 years, we have worked in engineering projects together and also just a friend. So when he called a few years ago and he's asked in Congress, we need some help on funding and research. And that's one of the things I think is one of the most crucial things we can do in West Virginia, diversifying our economy through research, finding different things that we can do. And that's where we began with this. So we've been able to, over the years, been able to put in some legislation to help him. Whenever they have needed help on research, we're there for them because that's the future of West Virginia's is diversification. Now I want to go further with that because there was also yesterday, we were down in Anmore uh, with the uh, Amstead Graphics, and I think some of the folks who were down with us on that project, there they're, they're going to bring in a plant from Rockville, Maryland. Again, good news, positive things happening. But three years ago, they called and said, can, we, can you help us? And over a period of those three years, we've been able to get more incentives offered in Washington to transfer this. What it's going to do is be able to make anodes for the nuclear industry here in West Virginia. And they've got a very special technique that they'll use with that. We can't do that just yet. But now with the innovation things that we're working with that. So I, what, we're trying to, what I'm trying to get across, we've had over 3,000 meetings when we're back in the district. We listen to what people are saying. We try to hear what they need, and then we take it back to Washington. This is what we heard from Touchstone. This is what we heard with graphics. This is what we've heard from industries all over this, the first district of West Virginia. And we meet with Jim Justice. Either we talk to him directly or we have staff. We do every other week, we'll have a conversation with him. We wanna make sure that West Virginia is responding to what people need. Because I'm a seventh generation West Virginian. I care about my state. So I go back to 1983, the first thing he, he rebuilt, he rebuilt a scanning electron microscope. That may not mean anything to you, but tell me, trust me, it is a very complicated electrical instrument to be able to do, and we worked together on several years like that. But then I watched how this company has grown. When they came out here, 
to the Millennium Center. They were the, the anchor for this operation to start here. And I had to, I had to list them down, if I could, with it, because you, you developed so far. The seafoam product that is now sweeping across the country, and now it's been uh, picked up by an Australian group. But seafoam, failure analysis, algae research, fiber reinforced aluminum, aluminum alloys, high temperature composites, carbon brace or erasives. Uh, this has always happened here. He's bringing in a new breed of West Virginia, way we can research and find it so that our kids don't have to leave. They're gonna find jobs here because of the research that's being done at Touchstone. So I, I'm particularly pleased with it. So, and now, now, they're broadening even further with the governor's help to broaden out into this, using nanocrystalline, nanocrystalline materials. I, I know it's a, we engineers talk this way, so pardon me for using this kind of, but that, we like talking about this kind of engineering technology. But this is coming here, and it's going to start here, right in this operation here, to be able to take this, to develop that for use all across the globe. And it's going to be started here in Tridelphia, West Virginia, in West Virginia. So I, I'm particularly proud that we've got this operation to take place with it because I see the opportunities. Any of you that have had anything to do with engineering technology, the nanocrystalline, to be able to work copper, tungsten, together, to chromium, to, together. This is going to be a new innovation and in where we need to be in West Virginia. So I really applaud Jim Justice for his vision, too, because it's happening all across West Virginia, the, the development. At the airports, we're seeing the aerospace coming in, there, and that's all because of what our governor and his leadership, what he's trying to do is put a new vision on West Virginia to make us a stronger and ever than they. So your part in this, I think it's incredible. Thank you. And Governor, you and Baby Dog. I, that's not like being upstage. I, they didn't bring a chair in because I didn't get it. Baby Dog got my chair. <laughs> but I know where my ranking is on all this. I'm, I'm just a civil engineer from Wheeling, West Virginia. Okay, so I want, I want to introduce the governor. There's not a man, I've served, now, I've, I've served under three governors. I've never seen a governor that understands West Virginia as, as well as he. His vision for trying to take West Virginia into the next generation, how we can have job opportunities, the people he surrounded himself with. That's why I'm so encouraged that we're going to see a new and brighter West Virginia under his leadership. So let's all give a round of applause to the great governor of West Virginia. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm not going to get out there because Baby Dog just whispered, that may not hold either one of us. <laughs> now, let me, let me just tell you just this. And I can't possibly tell you, that. Can, I hope you can hear me really, really well all the way in the back. Because I'm going to tell you stuff today, and I'm not going to keep you long. I'm just going to keep you about four or five or six or seven minutes. But I'm gonna tell you stuff right from my heart. Absolutely right directly from my heart. First of all, I know that most of you would rather be here to see Baby Dog than see me, and I'm okay with that. And I also am gonna tell you that Baby Dog and I are on the same dietary program, and we're both okay with that. But let me just tell you just this. I just met Brian Joseph. And what is going on right here, and what is going on in many, many places in West Virginia, just to say it like maybe somebody up in Holler or whatever, but would have never thunk it possible. We wouldn't have. And at the end of the day, these people are so bright, and they're so on the cutting edge, and his family's right here with him and everything. And, uh, and absolutely, with all in that, we are so blessed to have them, it's off the chart. All the great people that work in these buildings and absolutely have done and done and done, you should be so proud, really and truly. At the end of the day, so proud. And we, as West Virginians, should be so appreciative. And that's really what separates us in many, many ways. You know, lots of places you can go, people love and are compassionate and good or craftsmen or whatever. But West Virginians truly appreciate others, and they don't forget it. And they won't forget it here either. 
And with all of that, let me just, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're speaking of, baby dog and I couldn't possibly keep up with you. There's no way. But at the end of the day, they're on the cusp of trying to do something, as I understand it, where they're making a product that is stronger than the strongest products that we have today to be able to advance our civilization and go forward. It's great stuff. It is really, really great stuff. Now, I want to just say just this to you. He mentioned, you know, economic development and, and Ed Gaunches, and I ask you for your prayers about Ed. Ed's had a little bit of a tough time, and, but, but he's doing great. And, you know, the Mike Graneys and Mitch Carmichaels and all the different people that are in economic development. And he says they're really great to work with. Well, I will promise you, if they are not great to work with, I will sit on them. But I am telling you, with all my soul, he's got courage. He stands up for us. Seven generations here. This great band man, Brian Joseph and everything, would not be here if it weren't for this man. Now, we thank Senator Manchin, we thank Senator Capito, we thank, our, we thank Congressman Moody and, 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 we, and, and Congressman uh, Carol Miller. We thank them and everything for helping us all along the way. But at the end of the day, why do you think this is here? This is here because of this man. That's all there is to it. Because he absolutely drives us all crazy. And he won't quit. He won't quit until he wins. Now, he's a quiet, reserved man. From the standpoint of me, you know, I can talk to you anytime, anywhere, and everything, and he's an engineer. You know, and engineers do stuff, and I talk to you. You know, at the end of the day, we got two super smart guys right here, and many, many, many of you that are right with them right there. We're very, very thankful and very blessed to have them. I'm the guy that appreciates I'm the guy that really just turned you loose and got out of your way and absolutely knew how good you really were. I promised you that I would take you on a rocket ship ride like nobody's business, and my God of living, you're on it. But absolutely all the way, he's been right with me. Now, you got to help right now. That's all there is to it. And, 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 and I, I, would, I would be here to celebrate all the great stuff that's going on in this business, all the job opportunities of all places who could have ever thunk it years back. Now, let's just be really fair. Years back, when all we could figure that we could possibly do was make another cut, and the more we cut, the more people left. And the more people left, we just drug the hole right with us. Well, I'll promise you, I wouldn't do that. And we came with better ideas. And all of a sudden, we took off. We took off on that rocket ship ride. I just envision just this, and I got to just tell you one thing, and because you may have missed it. But just imagine, you know, you walk into office in January of when, and you got six months left in the year and you're under a constitutional amendment to have a balanced budget and they tell you, uh oh, we're really upside down and we're not going to make it. We're going to be $217 million short right now. And you say, well, there is no way. There's just plain no way. And then, but that's not the bad news. The bad news is it's going to get worse and worse and worse after that. And so we all dig in. We all dig in. One of my first calls was to this man because I knew of his reputation and everything about him. With all that being said, some way, somehow, we ran across the finish line with a surplus of like $4 million. And I was ecstatic. I was tickled to death. Now, I, I don't want to bore you, but when my dad died in 1993, they brought me in after I was a, a year there they brought me in the books of all the companies and we made $19,000. And I was tickled flat to death. Now listen, I know how tough it is when you're in the middle of a hole to get yourself out of a hole. And with all of that, we start, don't we? And every single day, we keep working. Again, the reason I went through that is just to tell you just this. Two days ago, 
Two days ago, and I keep up with it every day, but two days ago they brought me the April books. They brought me one month in this state. One month in this state. And we had a $253 million surplus in one month. In one month. Now, now I don't say that for you to say good stuff about baby dog or me. I say that because you had to have a strategy. You had to have a pathway. West Virginia year to date is $993 million of surplus. What does, that ha what, what does that make happen? It makes goodness upon goodness upon goodness happen. And baby dog will be her head up and down for that. So Brian, I can't imagine what you're doing. But it is so unbelievable to me that it's happening in West Virginia. My dad an aeronautical engineer, was an aeronautical engineer and a graduate from Purdue. And he absolutely would have been so into this that you can't fathom. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart in every way. God bless each and every one of you. And I know we've got Senator Well back here and a bunch of other people that I, I, you know, that I probably failed to, to mention. But nevertheless, thank all of you. Let's keep pulling the rope. Honest to goodness, West Virginia right now is cooking. And the only way they're going to stop us is getting our own way. And I hope and pray we're not going to do that. Thank you so much for having us. Now, if y'all want to come up here and say hi to baby dog, we'll sit right here.